Sabrina Seeger is here with me in our studio today for Going Beyond. Now, Sabrina is very well known around our country and in many other countries for her magnificent paintings on horses. But she's also been talking to me about her interest in biblical art, what it signifies, what she's trying to convey to people who go to her shows to watch and look at her paintings. Now, uh, Sabrina, I just keep thinking that, you, okay, you started in your early 20s. So, uh, do you think that as an artist you can go on for what, what, how long, how long would you like to go on painting? That's the good thing about uh, art, that you can go on, you know, till, uh, till the last breath because as long as you can hold the paintbrush and, you know, make the line drawing and uh, use your as pigmentation, but then you grow as an artist as well. So, tell me how you've grown then. Well, uh, one is I look at the technique that I, I've used the techniques that I'm f uh, sort of, uh, uh, sort of familiar with, yes. uncomfortable with, okay. that is uh, realism. Then I looked at the way I can uh, paint and so I've evolved from, you know, mainly broad strokes and detailed drawings. I can look, go into museums and I see their techniques, but at the end of the day I come back and I see how can I incorporate that and grow as an artist. So, if you look at my previous works and you look at my works now, you can see a difference for the better. Right. You know, uh, Sabrina, I am not much of an art lover or an aficionado. I'm, I'm not at all. But, but I would like to say that, you know, there are some times when you go to an art show and you honestly don't know what the artist is trying to tell you. I've had the privilege of looking at one of the best museums in the world at the Salvador Dali stuff in, in Petersburg in the U.S. But... Uh, I, there's very little that I can actually take away from that and therefore I'm going to ask you of all of these people of all of the famous painters of this world is there any one person whose style you wanted to follow or what how does it work two of them in fact Tell uh, me. Uh, Degas and uh, Toulouse Lautrec both of them have very uh, different styles but I like them both so it's difficult for me to, you know, uh, sort of imitate their uh, technique or their art, but I like them. I try to. So I'm sort of in between these two, you can say. Mm. One is a little more impressionistic with his, uh, the way he's done the ballet dancers. And uh, you have the other one who has done horses, but it's more bold work. So in between these two, you have, uh, you know, that's where I, I like these two artists. But when you look at, when you're saying you, some of them don't understand, yes. that is, you need to have this art appreciation. If Chennai could have an art appreciation course, then you would understand uh, what art is all about. In fact, for instance, if you look at a picture of Picasso, he's done one of a man with a pipe very realistic, yes. very yes. good, mm. okay? Mm. And you say that's good, but it doesn't bring out really any feeling. Then you see his further, his work a little later, when he goes into this abstract, and you see this woman who's crying. She's got fat, stubby fingers. She's literally crying. She's got two eyes where, you know, it's in profile. And you wonder what it is, but it brings out, it could be like, oh, I don't want to see this painting, or it makes you start to think what it is that the artisan is conveying to you is it because this person has gone through some tremendous trauma, pain trauma, trauma yes. where you when you see a lady crying you will not understand you and i will know it is it's absolutely from the soul that one is really suffering and showing that pain through the the crying of the right. lady so why don't you sabrina Seeger, start something like an art appreciation course maybe you know, in conjunction with any of the big art galleries. How come we haven't had that yet? I think that would be a great idea. I'll go to it for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we need that because this art appreciation is there in America, in, uh, in the UK. UK is big, big. For instance, uh, the fact, just the fact that when I say I do oils, everybody's eyes, wow, you do oils. But I say, and I do watercolors as well. They don't seem very interested, but m the watercolor is the one that is a very tough medium. People think because we paint with watercolors in school, uh, it's an easy medium, but it's a very harsh medium that you, from the time the brush touches the paper, you got to finish the work. The f really? You see, there's no mistakes. You cannot make mistakes with watercolors at all. And my style is the British way where I leave the white of the paper. In, and uh, the French way is when you do it more like oils, you can 
add white into it and it is a gouache style. But in, uh, in the oils, I can make mistake after mistake after mistake. And you can cover it up. And you can it? cover it up. That is mm. why in certain of the old masterpieces that you see the ma of the masters, you can see that underneath they are able to see previous works. Really? Mm. Okay. Now, uh, how as an artist do you decide whether you are going to go with water or you are going to go with the oil? How, how does that make a decision? How do you make a decision? Yeah. For instance, if I am doing uh, many of mine, I do not do uh, background which is in detail. But in some of the works, if I uh, decide that I would like to have a, a, a background to it, I then tend to make it into an oil painting. If I look at it and I see that uh, this is a challenging one in watercolors, the expression will come out much better and much more fresher. A watercolor is much more fresh, it is in in that immediate thing that you get when you look at a watercolor painting. It strikes you when the, because you finished it in one go. So then I say this is what I would like to do with uh, it in uh, watercolors. Right. Now Sabrina, after all these years of being an artist, I am just wondering now if you went to uh, paint a horse right now, okay. Would you still necessarily have to uh, actually see a horse in reality and then paint that horse or can you, I am sure by now you can just do it from the back of your head? Uh, no, my style requires that I look at the horse. Really? Yeah, because it has got to have the proportions very correctly uh, and the, the horse that I look at, the expression as I said, the expression in the eyes of that horse has to come out. But is a horse going to stand still and look at you? I mean, you're just going to look at a horse. Horse is going, moving, whatever, yeah. or, or so, you know, munching its hay yeah, or whatever. Exactly. So, in uh, when it is polo or it's racing, uh, it is such uh, the energy, the strength of the horse, and the speed with which the game is played or the race is run. It really needs uh, to have photographs as an aid to help you. Okay. So, the olden days you would have them watching it and then they would come and they would picturize it. You would see the two front hooves going you know together yes. which is not how a horse is. At one point in time and actually all the, the four, four hooves of the horse are going up at one point of time. Yes. So, it is when photography came into being that the horse could actually really be uh, you know sort of drawn in how it actually is. So, uh, really stride. we are saying here that a modern technology in photography has really assisted people has uh, to, to show it like it is. You know uh, Sabrina Sega you have opened to me a window to your soul today and uh, I really I am amazed and I am absolutely fascinated by the way that you could come here into the studio. I want to thank you Sabrina so much indeed and all power to you with your thank paintings you and me. I, I, you are you're just a great <laughs> artist that I know mm. for sure. Well, it's been our great pleasure to have Sabrina Seeger here in our studio today. And uh, just as I go and I say bye-bye to you and to Sabrina, I would like to pay homage to her late husband, John Seeger, who was really responsible for this lady and all her marvelous work today. And so until the next time, you take care. Bye for now.